Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. In my previous video, Group Managed Service Accounts in Server 2022, yeah, I made an updated version. It's got 6,000 views. I made it 11 months ago. Yeah, don't watch the one with 40,000 views. It's got music in it. Everybody leaves a comment complaining about the music. And if you look at the comments, they're all complaining about the music. It's a five-year-old video with 40,000 views. I'm not taking it down, but don't watch it and don't complain about the music. Watch the new one I made 11 months ago. It's shorter. It's more concise and it's up to date. It's on server 2022. So yeah, I have a new project at work. So I want to install SQL Express in my lab and I want to run it using a group managed service account. So yeah, there's SQL Server 2022 Express there. We've downloaded that and we're getting ready to work with it. So now if you haven't watched this movie, Group Managed Service Accounts in Server 2022, you might want to go back and watch it I'm not going to go into complete detail about everything, but there's two things you need to do. You need to add this KDS root key. And there's the PowerShell command there. Uh, basically, it does it right away because I only have one domain controller in the domain. You need to do this before you try to create a group managed service account. Add AD, add KDS root key, effective time, get date, add hours minus 10 and I subtract the 10 hours because by default it waits 10 hours to let AD replicate. Uh, I don't, can't think of any AD that takes 10 hours to replicate. So that's the first part. And then you look here and here's the PowerShell. It's hard to see the little back tick, which is the continuation in PowerShell. So that's all one line of code, but the back tick lets you hit enter and uh, go to the next line. And that's the command you need to run to create a group managed service account. This was for GMSA EID, but I also ran it for GMSA SQL. And you see at the bottom, I'm skipping man, manage password interval in days. The default 30 days is fine. If you want to change the default password interval, like the GMSA manages password by itself, uh, you can only do it during creation. So if you need to change that, you'd have to start over. Yeah. Look down below, I'll leave a link to the code, probably on GitHub or something like I usually do. And also didn't need service principal names. So we skipped over that. Yeah, so you see here is GMSA SQL, the group managed service account. Now group managed service account can be assigned to a group. Originally when they made managed service accounts, they could only be assigned to a single computer. So we've also created a group, GMSA SQL. And we need to make sure we add our SQL Server to that. TUS dash SQL one. Oh, I forgot to select computers. I hate it when I do that. <laughs> how many times have you? How many times do you do that? Leave a comment down below. Like every time. <laughs> there we go. Add Tucson SQL one to the group. Now, of course. To accrue that group membership, we're going to have to go on to Tucson SQL 1 and reboot it. Oh, fortunately, it needs some updates. Yeah, we're on Tucson SQL 1 right now. It needs some updates. We'll go ahead and install those and we'll reboot in a few minutes here. Yeah, see, I'm done. I'm up to date. Now we can reboot. So I know from previous experience, I had problems with the firewall and SQL. So I wanted to get ahead of that PowerShell to open firewall for SQL. And of course, here's the co-pilot answer. And I'm going to go follow up with an article itself just to make sure co-pilot's not hallucinating. And there's the PowerShell commands right there in this article. Look for the links down below. So we're just going to copy that. Go on in. Yep, we're on Tucson SQL 1. You see that? Got PowerShell as an administrator. Drop those new net firewall rule commands. And we're basically, basically allowing TCP and UDP to that port. Uh, I forget what it is off the top of my head. <laughs> so now we're ready to install SQL Server Express. There we go. Let's select custom because we want to set, select the location. I'm just going to check and make sure my F drive is ready here. Yeah, Tucson SQL 1 F is ready to go. Lots of room there for SQL goodness. So we'll just change that to F SQL 2022. That's the target for the 
media download, the installation media. So we're downloading. We're going to crop a lot of this stuff out. So if you see stuff go like that, wow, I already started setup. Okay, off we go. Okay, so here's the SQL Server Installation Center. We don't need reporting services. I will want SQL Server Management so that I can assign database permissions to a service account on the application that we're going to be running. But we're going to start out with standalone installation or add features to an existing installation. Okay, I want to accept the terms. Next. Okay. Uh, use Windows Update, sure. Use Microsoft Update to check for updates. Why not? Let's go. Got to keep my stuff in the lab up to date. Okay, so it's doing some checks here. Okay, so it highlights the firewall with the warning. It's just warning you that you need to enable the firewall rules for a SQL, potentially. And then if you follow the link, let's see if it takes me exactly to the article I was at. And do not restore my pages. It takes me back to the article where I was at, where I copied those, <laughs> those firewall rules. Great. Okay. I was thinking ahead. All right. So I have no qualms about going ahead at this point. Okay. We don't use Azure extension for SQL Server. So we're just going to skip this entire page here, untick that, and go next. Feature selection. I don't need anything. I just want the database engine. We're not going to do full text, machine learning, or SQL Server replication. Yeah, so let's start on ticking those. And this is what we're going to go with. And then you look down below at the bottom, there's uh, file paths. And we want to change those C, the C colon to F colon. Yeah. Because this is where the database is ultimately going to reside. So we'll change all of those. F colon, F colon. F colon C says instance root directory and then shared feature directories. There we go. Let's see how it's going here. It says please wait. Okay, so we're going to use an instance. We're going to keep the instance SQL Express. We'll recognize that when we go to install our application. Waiting, waiting. Here we go, server configuration. And then here is where I have the option to add a service account. Because I got rid of reporting services and all that, I only have one service to assign the group managed service account to. So we'll click down here and we're going to browse. Let's see if we, we can find it without clicking on computer. GMSA SQL. Okay, you don't want the group. That's the bottom that's highlighted by default. You want the one with the gear for the icon. That's the group managed service account. There we go. Now we can't change the SQL Server browser service account. It's running under the local system, I think. Yeah, NT Authority local system. Can't change it. I gave it a good hard try anyway. <laughs> okay, move on. Let's go. Yeah, I'm doing this at like probably five in the morning on a Saturday or something. Just like drinking my coffee and trying to get through here. Yeah, grant perform, volume maintenance tasks. Uh, I don't know. We're just going to skip right along there. Let's go with what we got. Okay. We're going to use Windows Authentication Mode. And I'm the domain administrator there. I want to make sure that I have access as the SQL Server admin. So that's what we got there. You want to pay attention to these things. Oh, there's other tabs there. I didn't even look at that. Data directories, tempdb, memory, user interfaces, file stream. Huh, that's interesting. Okay, so I cropped out a lot here. This is 5 minutes and 44 seconds later. We're done. Yeah, I didn't want to show you every single process, <laughs> every single indicator bar. I want to go ahead and install SQL Server management tools. Yeah. So like I say, I may want to 
assign database permissions later on. I think you need the management tools to do that. Probably could have, if I had my application service account, I probably could have added that at that point. So you actually have to go download SQL Server Management Studio. There we go. Click on the download link. Down it comes. Pretty good size. While we're letting that download, let's go see SQL and make sure it's running under our Group Managed Service account. SQL Express. And it's running as our AACode GMSA.SQL. The dollar sign, it actually is a computer account because computers in Active Directory reset their passwords every 30 days. So it's kind of, the Group Managed Service Account's an interesting animal there. Okay, I'm not going to change the, since this is just program, I'm not going to change that to the F drive. Okay. Just installing the management studio. I'm cropping and compressing a lot here, probably. Yeah. Let's see what else. We're actually done with that. Okay, and management studio's setup is complete. We don't need the inst installation program for anything else. So now I'm ready to install Microsoft Identity Manager. Now it says Manager 2016, MIM 2016. It's actually supported through 2029 on extended support right now. And depending on your Office 365, Azure AD, and enterprise agreements, MIM may be included. You want to check with your vendor. Look for the links down below. Give this video a like. Leave a comment. And before you go watch more of my Windows Server Administration videos, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.